Scott Laboratories presents Drops of Knowledge. In this video, we'll be reviewing setting up a cartridge filter housing, testing membrane integrity through the bubble point method, product filtration, as well as cartridge cleaning, regeneration, and storage. When removing the cartridge from the box, cut open the O-ring end of the bag. While handling the cartridge, it's important to avoid contact of the filter media with bare hands or oil surfaces, as this may disrupt the wetting of the cartridge during testing. Using a gloved hand, moisten O-ring on adapter with water. Insert adapter end of cartridge into housing adapter cup by slowly applying downward pressure until cartridge feels firmly seated. Then, twisting a quarter turn clockwise until the code 7 locking tabs are firmly seated into the adapter cup. Note, code 8 and code 3 cartridges do not need to lock into twist position. Once the cartridge is firmly seated in the housing, place lid on housing and securely seal the closure. Open the water line, being sure that inlet and outlet product lines are closed while vents and drains are open. Make sure that while rinsing with water, the vent is releasing water to ensure full wetting of the cartridge. Once the housing is full, open water discharge outlet to begin rinsing. At this point, the filter can also be sanitized, either by increasing water temperature to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, 82 degrees Celsius, for the prescribed period of time, or by draining the housing and applying steam. All caution and best practices should be followed when handling high temperature or water or steam. Resume rinse with ambient water to bring filter back to room temperature. One of the key values of membrane filtration is the ability to test the integrity of the filter prior, during, and after use. A common method used in the beverage industry to check gross integrity is the bubble point test. Note, bubble point testing is only feasible on membrane media and bubble point values may vary between suppliers and brands. Bubble point should only be performed using compressed air or nitrogen. At all times, a regulator must be used when working with compressed gases. Drain all residual rinse water from the housing by opening the vent and the drain. Ensure all closures on the base and lid are properly affixed. Close inlet and outlet side drain. Attach rubber hose to outlet drain and place in a half-filled 5-gallon bucket of water. Attach compressed air or nitrogen regulator to housing vent using a secure connection. Gradually increase pressure on the compressed gas regulator from 0 to around 5 psi or 0.3 bar. You will immediately notice a rush of water through the discharge hose into your bucket. This is the residual rinse water in the housing that may not have drained. Slowly increase regulator pressure towards the designated bubble point for your specific filter brand and porosity. During this time, you may see a small stream of bubbles. This may be gas diffusing through the liquid membrane on the filter and not be a true sign of bubble point. When you reach the minimum bubble point value on the regulator, you may see bubble point at this time. It is important to achieve a minimum bubble point value without seeing a bubble point. If bubble point is reached prior to this value, re-rinse the cartridge and perform the procedure again. Continued failure may indicate loss of filter integrity, insufficient wetting, or incorrect seating of the adapter. It is important to remember that bubble point only identifies the gross integrity of the system. If bubble point has not been reached at or around the minimum bubble point value, do not continue to increase pressure, as excessive pressure may damage the membrane. Once testing is complete, close regulator on compressed gas and slowly release pressure from the system. Record all pressures and values in a filtration log. If using a depth filter or integrity pass membrane, you can now commence filtration. Drain any residual rinse or sanitation water, then close drains and water discharge lines. Close product outlet valve and with vent open, slowly introduce wine through product inlet valve. When wine arrives at vent, close vent and open product outlet valve. Initial differential pressure is likely to be from 7 to 10 psi as calculated by the inlet gauge less the outlet gauge. 
During filtration, follow optimal flow suggestions from your manufacturer. Optimal conditions for cartridge filter are available from Scott Laboratories. As the filtration progresses, pressure will increase as solids are retained by the cartridge. Graphically, this is seen as an exponential growth in pressure. As time passes and gallons are filtered, pressure will increase at an accelerated rate. If regeneration of media is desired, such regeneration should be done prior to the knee of the curve, or 45 degree tangent. This is typically occurring in wine, beer, and distillate filtration at around 18 to 20 psi differential pressure. Once filtration is complete, close product outlet valve. Pressure should be released slowly from the system and residual liquid drained. Post rinse of the filter can be achieved by introducing a forward flow of water, closing inlet and outlet valves, and opening inlet water valve and discharge valve. Rinse with ambient water, 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius, at 1.5 to 2 times the speed of your filtration. Over 5 minutes, increase water temperature to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. After 10 minutes, bring water temperature back to ambient and open all vent and drain valves to flush ports. Once all ports drain clear water, shut off flow, open top vent, and drain housing. If using a membrane, another bubble point can be performed at this time to ensure that the cartridge membrane remained integral throughout the filtration. Being sure to release all prior pressure, release closure and remove lid. Using clean gloves or the original plastic bag that the filter came in, remove cartridge by rotating clockwise, if code 7, and then slowly pulling off of adapter plate. Chemical regeneration of the cartridge or membrane can be performed at this point. Check with your supplier or Scott Laboratories for specific protocols and procedures. Short and long-term storage can be achieved with most cartridges in a 35 to 45% neutral food grade ethanol solution. When reusing a stored cartridge, users should perform all rinsing, sanitation, and integrity test prior to subsequent use.